Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and today what I wanted to talk about was the new weapons for the Liberators that are available on the player test server right now. Now, when we initially talked, what we were talking about having was a tail gun, an Empire-specific belly guns, and then from there, potentially a new nose gun. Well, we got a little bit of that. We got a new nose gun, we got a new tail gun, and a Empire agnostic uh, belly gun, basically meaning the same for all factions. Now, let's go ahead and just kind of go through what these weapons are, and then we'll kind of get into impressions. But let's go ahead and start off with the spur. The spur is the new nose gun, and the description reads, The L24R spur is equipped with a specialized optics that allow the pilot to adjust the weapon's aim rather than being fixed forward. Essentially what this is, is it's a gimbal-mounted weapon that allows you to kind of adjust your aim. Now, it's not just a little bit of adjustment. You can actually adjust your aim from 90 degrees to the right to 90 degrees to the left, essentially giving you about 180 degrees sway on your weapon, not to mention up and down. It makes the weapon pretty flexible. It's also nice to kind of keep uh, pilots away as you're kind of uh, flying around. It gives you a little bit more flexibility, but we'll get into impressions in just a second. The next one is the Dual 75 Duster. Now, that's the belly gun that we all get. Now, the description here reads, The Duster is equipped with dual 75mm cannons that are able to quickly unload its 10-round magazine. Each shot decreases accuracy unless given time to recover. This allows the D-75 to feather accurate shots um, or bombard a wider area by unloading. So that's kind of interesting, right? So what does that actually mean? Basically, you've got a dual cannon that's going to get wider spread the longer you hold down the trigger. If you single shot it, it's going to remain pretty accurate. But if you hold it down, it's going to be a pretty wild-ass weapon. Now, the last one here is going to be the, Hy the Hyena Missile Launcher. And like we talked about before, it's kind of like a coyote on the back of your Liberator. Now, the description here reads, Hyena, Hyena missiles are compact, short-range missiles that are dumb-fired, but will lock onto enemy aircraft if they get close enough and in light, inflict light damage. So, again, kind of reads like the Coyotes do. Um, but let's kind of go back to the beginning and talk about how we think these all things fit in and how, uh, you know, my first impressions with about an hour of playtime under my belt, how I think that all kind of plays out to this point. So now that we got some of the descriptions out of the way, let's go over some first impressions. First, starting out with the nose gun. Now, the spur overall is probably the most intriguing of the group. Uh, it's the first weapon that we really have that gimbal mounted ability to kind of aim without having to change the direction of your craft. Basically, you're not firing a fixed uh, weapon. Now, one of the additional descriptors is uh, optics for this weapon are engaged with the weapon's optic hotkey or cockpit mouse free look hotkeys. It's kind of a mouthful, but um, basically, if you can free look in your cockpit like you can now, you can aim your weapon. Now, the other option is, if you just hold down the right trigger on your mouse to engage your optic, kind of like you would for, let's say, thermal or zoom, that's also going to engage this free look, meaning that you could then aim up, down, left, right. doesn't matter what you have on. So if you have zoom on and you hold right trigger, it's going to zoom in and give you the free look ability. If you've got thermal, again, you're going to get the thermal filter and have the ability to free look around. This is probably my favorite addition of the class. Basically, it's giving you a weapon that gives you a lot more versatility. Um, you know, it gives you some flexibility. Let's say you're hover bombing. You're just sit, staying put while your uh, bomber's doing the work. You then have the ability to kind of engage targets in the area. You can also fly in a straight line, but kind of shoot things off to your side, making your strafing runs a little bit more effective. Overall, I like the spur. Now, the damage perspective... The damage per second on the spur isn't going to be anywhere near that of the uh, of the tank buster. However, the ability that you have to kind of aim your shots a lot better, and we all know the tank buster is wild. You know, your shots kind of go everywhere. Now, the spur is going to give you more pinpoint accuracy than the tank buster, obviously. So it's really a better competition between the spur and the vector. Now, they're pretty similar overall, but what you're going to see the key differences are. The spur is going to have a faster fire rate than the vector does, but the vector is actually going to do a little bit more damage overall than the spur is. So it's kind of a trade-off there. Do you want a weapon that does a little bit more damage, but you have to keep your ship facing in that direction? Or do you want to see your um, have the flexibility of being able to aim while you're flying and hit your targets? It's hard to fly, maneuver, and aim your gimbal-mounted gun at the same time. So my recommendation, and what you'll probably see me using most of the time, is still going to be the Tank Buster. However, I think the Spur is a nice option. You know, it kind of fits in between the roles. It gives you a little bit more flexibility, though it's less special or you know less specialized. 
in general, I mean, I think the Spurs are a really nice addition, and personally is my favorite of these uh, new additions to the game. Now, moving on to the next weapon, we're going to talk about the Duster. Now, the Duster in general is an interesting weapon. I think it's got a place to fit, and it probably falls somewhere between that of the Shredder and the Zephyr. Um, the reason I say that is it's somewhat effective against vehicles, but the problem is with the fact that if you just hold down the trigger, the spread becomes really, really, really large. And when I say really large, I mean if you're aiming at your target, you're not going to hit it towards the end of your clip. So let's talk about this. It's got a muzzle velocity of 100 meters per second, which is half of that of the Zephyr. And the damage is 900 compared to 1200 on the Zephyr. So to me, when I'm looking at this, I personally think I'm probably going to stick with the Zephyr. Now, the one situation where I think the Duster really comes up and is a pretty good situation is that, like, let's say you come up over a hill and you know there's just a stockpile of infantry that are just kind of in a cluster, or maybe it's between bases and there's a large push. The Duster's inaccuracy and its fairly decent splash damage can probably work to your advantage where you're going to get a lot of assists. And if there's damaged enemies in the area, you're probably going to get a lot of kills. Um, in situations where the Duster has to be really accurate, where you have to single shot it instead of hold it down, I think there's better options, i.e. the Dalton or the Zephyr or the Shredder. I think all of those fit better. That being said, there are specific roles where I think the Duster can be fun, but I, if you're looking to, you know, if it makes it to live like it is right now, I don't think it's worth your time or money. Situationally, yes, but outside of just the fun factor of having this wild-ass weapon on the belly of your uh, Liberator, it's probably not worth the time. Now, the last weapon that was actually re uh, released is the Hyena. And you can tell by the name, you know, Hyena, Coyote, they're both kind of similar animals, um, and they follow similar type roles. This is a tail gun for your Liberator, and essentially what it is is that it fires un- uh, I guess, dumb-fired missiles that can lock on if they get within close range to enemy aircraft. Now, the hyena itself feels like it would be an awesome weapon, and it feels like it's overpowered. But when you actually get into practice, it's hard to lock onto targets, and it's not even that effective when you actually do get onto a target. The best description I got was actually from somebody on the test server who we were engaging that says, it looks impressive, but it deals nearly no damage, and it's easy to dodge. Frowny face, or sarcastic face or whatever you want to call that little face that you're seeing there essentially the hyena is an okay weapon and it may be okay if you've got a gunner on the back that really just can't aim um you know really just can't aim uh, a walker effect effectively the walker in my mind for an anti-air roll is still going to be significantly better than the hyena is right now now there's some weird bugs that are in place that make me kind of scratch my head as far as you know what's intended and what's not so both the duster and the hyena have really interesting ability to aim anywhere they want basically you could look up through your liberator if you want on either of these weapons the hyena right now is actually able to turn 180 degrees from the rear and actually fire to the front i don't know how much of this is intentional and how much is not I like the idea of the hyena having the ability to engage targets below because it does do some damage to vehicles and it does some damage to infantry and there is a little bit of splash damage though it's not very significant and in fact I think the hyena actually took me three shots direct hit to actually kill an infantry member so um, either way I like the idea of the hyena or on the back being able to aim below the craft I just don't feel like it should be able to aim forward like another belly gun. So that's probably my biggest head scratcher of the group. I'm sitting here wondering what is actually intended with this weapon, and I think that's something we need to lock down because where it stands, it shouldn't be able to aim forward, but I think there's probably a threshold where it could go beyond. Now, again, it seems like when you're actually aiming the hyena, it functions more like a belly gun. You look like you're sitting up front. You look like you're sitting there with the, where your main belly gun would be. Your uh, rockets, when they're fired, actually come from behind where you're shooting, and it makes aiming them kind of difficult and strange. So that's kind of something weird that I'd like to see what's actually intended before we actually make real assumptions about this weapon. The last note that I wanted to put in here was specifically with the spur. Um, one of the guys helping me test this out was uh, my outfit leader, uh, Flexo Rodriguez, and he flies with a, a joystick on the bigger vehicles like the uh, Liberator and the uh, Galaxy. So with that in mind, he said that the free look on the spur was incredibly challenging to use, and there's not really a good option right now on how to do that. So 
for those of you that do fly with a joystick, using a weapon like the spur may actually give you a or put you at a disadvantage for the time being. If something's changed or implemented differently, that may change, but where it stands right now, there's not a good solution to it, at least that we were able to find in the short time that we were testing. So let's do a quick recap um, of these weapons. I think the Spur is a great addition. I think it's going to be fun and fit a good role. Um, the Duster overall is really wild, and I think there's better options available. Um, the travel time is really, really, really slow and kind of frustrating to use, um, not to mention the spread. Again, I think there's specific instances and situations where the Duster is worthwhile. Um, I just think right now it's kind of outclassed. And the Hyena, I think the Walker's going to be a better bet for you. If you want to go ground pound, you're probably going to have better luck with the Bulldog. However, um, it where it stands right now, having the ability to pretty much look and shoot anywhere is a pretty big benefit for it. So if that's something that sticks around, it's at least going to be interesting to see how that's balanced out. The weapon overall, again, looks impressive, but is uh, pretty underwhelming. So depending on where the damage stays and what changes are actually made to it, it might be okay for it to have extended ability to kind of monitor the battlefield and shoot in just about any direction. So um, I'll put a link to the test server in the uh, description so you can go uh, play with these yourselves. Again, I think they're fun. I like seeing new stuff in the game. Um, one is great, another one is okay, and another one's kind of poo-poo. But again, uh, go, go in with an open mind. Uh, don't just take my word for gospel. And remember that uh, this is on the test server. It's not on live. So there's probably a lot of changes incoming. So that's it for now. I uh, will talk to you guys later. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Take care.